Um, good evening, Gareth. Um, Hi, Ben. You're always someone who uh, puts a lot of faith in whoever you give the England shirt to, and in particular, never been afraid to put young players out there. So, how pleasing was it for you to watch a relatively new group of players come together, grow into the game, and most of all, play with that freedom that we saw in the second half and enjoy themselves and score some great goals? Yeah, well, well more than anything, pleased for them because, as you rightly say, it's not easy for a, such an inexperienced group to um, pick up everything we're asking them to in a short space of time. Some of them have never trained together or worked together until two or three days ago. So um, a lot for them all to take in. And I, I thought, as you said, they grew as the game wore on. Uh, Wales pressed us well at the start and it took us a little while to work that out um, and to um, you know, deal with some of the pressing that we needed to do to be more effective without the ball. Um, the goal settled us down a bit, I think. And then the longer the game wore on, you, you saw players start to be more relaxed, start to be more comfortable. But that was totally understandable given, um, given the situation. So really pleased for them and pleased with what they did. Thanks. Thank you. Next we go to Mark Owen from The Sun. Hi, Gareth. Hi, Mark. Hi. Um, obviously, a lot of people were sort of talking about this game, saying, oh, it's a friendly, uh, there's no real point in it. But for those three guys who scored tonight, mm. it's going to be a night that's going to, they're going to remember forever, really, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And um, we must always remember that international sport is such an honour. And we, we had four players starting their first match for England tonight, all from different parts of the country, all different ages, all totally different journeys to get here. But such a memorable moment for them and their families. Um, two of them scored and um, yeah the only sadness is that there's nobody in the stadium to see it because those moments you want to share with a big crowd and and feel that adrenaline as well so very special for, for all of them and um, I thought they could be really pleased with the way they played. Thanks Mark. Next we'll go to John Cross from the Mirror. Hello, hello Gareth. Uh, just, just following okay. up from uh, just following up from that, with, with, on Mark's question was, I mean, obviously Dominic Calvert-Lewin, 10th goal of the season, is in fantastic form. You know, it must have been so pleased for him. But just on sort of Connor Cody's moment, I just, you know, it's kind of, it's just one want to make the nation feel good, isn't it? I mean, it's really felt, felt just so wonderful, didn't it, for him? Well, uh, I mean, Dominic first, I think he's in such, yep. a, good, such a good moment and his all-round game, I thought, was excellent. He pressed with intelligence, he held the ball up well and connected the game. I think every long ball he won, the flick-ons, which we probably should have capitalised on a bit more. And then the goal, of course, is the thing which you know sends centre-forwards home really happy. So, absolutely really pleased with his performance. Um, and Connor, yeah, I mean, he makes me feel good, sat next to me yesterday. So, he's got that real infectious personality. Um, I, I don't. I mean, I, know, I say I don't think. I know he doesn't go up to set plays with his club, so um, he's, he's obviously enjoyed that moment. I'm sure he'll go back now, and Nuno will never hear the last of it, probably. So, but um, yeah, very special for him. He ended up with the captain's armband, and I wasn't. I wouldn't have hesitated to give it to him from the start, but we felt Kieran is the most cap player, and with everything he's done for us, warranted that accolade. Really. Thanks, John. Uh, Sammy Mockbell from the Mail. Hi, Gareth. Hi, Sammy. Gareth, we've made a lot this week about the three guys who, who, who obviously missed this game because of the because of the COVID breach. But there's the performances and the results tonight of of the players and some certain players in particular just stress and underline the importance of once you're in the squad or once you're in the team is to do everything you can within your means to make sure you stay in it. Mm. Well, that is. In essence, that is the really big um, lesson for anybody in that sort of situation, really. You you want to be involved, you want to be playing. When you've got the shirt or you've got a place in the squad, you don't want to allow other people the opportunity to take it. And um, whenever we give debuts or we ever um, uh, get guys who deserve their chance who've been in the squad for a while, time on the pitch there's opportunity for them to grab a place and to push themselves up the pecking order a bit. And, you know, several did that tonight. And, um, yeah, 
there there is competition play, for places, not just the squad we named, but other players that are, are just outside that. So the depth, uh, you know, the depth of our squad compared to Ryan's tonight really made the difference, and um, it, it's difficult for him to manage these three games and prioritise and try to put a strong team out tonight. Hopefully his centre forward isn't too seriously injured. Um, but um, yeah, our depth was, was important and it's lovely to see young players able to come in and flourish, really. Thanks, Sammy. Next we go to Paul Brown from the start. Hi, Gareth. Hi, Paul. Um, on Dominic, was that one of the best debuts you've had since you've been England manager and, and did you take him off because he's going to play a part in the next two games? Well, we definitely felt there were players that we needed to protect given the balance of the squad and how we see the next few, uh, you know, the next week or so playing out. Um, so that was another sort of additional complication in how we were trying to manage the game tonight. Um, but yeah, in terms of accomplished debuts I mean I, I thought he, he looked very much at home um, he has done a week frankly he's um, not not looked nervous in any way as I said I think the fact that he's playing well for his club his club are top of the league he's scoring regularly it couldn't be a better moment to bring him into the um, setup really and um, he, he'll uh, I'm sure take a lot of confidence from tonight as well thanks Paul thanks we'll go to Rob Harris from AP uh, hi guys, congratulations on the win. Thank um, you. Um, quite a lot's been made tonight of the fact all the scorers have got connections with EFL in terms of their development. Um, do you think, is, is it showing to you the importance of the pyramid when there's been so much focus uh, on, on the low league clubs in, in the last few weeks? Yeah, well, I mean, we've always had that connection. Uh, I think our back three at the World Cup were Stones, Walker, Maguire, and you know, two started at Sheffield United, and in, in the when they weren't in the Premier League, and and Stones at Barnsley, and you know, you you could have gone through a lot of that squad in the same way. So, yeah, our, our pyramid is incredibly strong, and very often the opportunity to play um, comes earlier for players who are in the Championship, um, particularly players who, who perhaps start their careers at the back. So. We, we know how important that is. Um, of course, it's a very complicated time for everybody in, in regard to surviving this. And um, like every business, the, the clubs in the Football League have, have got a huge challenge. But um, hopefully they're, they're able to come through it. OK, thanks, Rob. We've got time for a couple more, starting with Jacob Steinberg from The Guardian. Hi, Gareth. Um, have you seen tonight... Hi. Have you seen tonight that, um, that Jack Grealish is... is Probably the player who can give you something different in the in the final third. That brilliant assist for the first goal. Yeah, he it, it, absolutely. He is a different type of player to probably any that uh, that we have. Uh, I mean, Sancho obviously and and Raheem um, have the ability to dribble and beat people, but he does it in a different way, and um, he's very comfortable receiving under pressure. Um, I, I think. The, the area he got into for the goal that, that he created um, is where he should aim to be more and more regularly because you want a player of his ability in and around that final third as much as you can. And he's good at receiving deep, but, but you know, I keep stressing to him that they're, they're the areas of the game where he can make the difference. And, um, and he did that tonight. So, um, you know, very pleased with him. I'm sure he'll be delighted to have, um, have, have had his first start as well. And um, yeah, we, we, he's a different type. Um, Mount coming on in that position or similar position. Uh, again, I thought I had an excellent impact on the game. He presses so well. He moves the ball so quickly. And um, he had a... a, a a, a real impact in setting up two or three chances um, in, in, in immediate um, uh, impact on the game. So there were there were so many things to to take from the game to to give us cause for thought. We've got to obviously put a team together for Sunday, but also a squad um, for the next couple of games. And it's it's um, always a more difficult challenge when you've won. Thanks, Jacob. And we'll finish with Paul Joyce from the Times. Gareth, will the three players who who missed tonight be in the join up with you tomorrow so um tammy and Jaden have 
um, trained independently, so with us, but it's sort of in isolation this afternoon. Um, all, all three players have tested negatively. Ben has had some illness, um, which we think is minor, but as a precaution, we've kept him separate from the group at the moment. So there's a, probably a strong chance that he won't be with us for the UEFA testing in the morning, which would rule him out of Sunday. But we would expect Tammy and Jaden to be available for that. Thanks all. Thank you.